Greetings, Commanders, and welcome to a very special episode of Pimp Magnum P.I.'s Arc. Hey, so you wanna be a player, but you weren't too smart. You gotta hit that up to get a pimp. That's right, guys. The three-time meme review winner and Tiberian Emperor, his triple crown, uh, Magnum P.I. He is uh, one of the biggest meme engineers and creators of memes for our game and uh, has been for, hell, since the beginning, really. Uh, we owe a lot to him, a lot of this community creation. But today we're doing a Pimp My Arc because, of course, he's a player of this game. And he said to me, Melt, of course I watch the channel, of course I've been keeping up with the community, but I'm at that point. I said, what point are you at? He said, well... I'm ready to get tier 10. And what a lot of people don't realize is when you get to advanced tier, tier 9, uh, you are faced with a very important decision after that. At tier 9, you get to experience all of the advanced troops, right? After the first fork, uh, you get Death Angel, Gaia, and Genesis. You have to get them if you ever want to get tier 10 one day. So the game forces you to try out the other tier 9s. But on the second fork, yes, the Emperor's second fork, he hasn't decided which tier 10 to go. Now, in the grand scheme of things, tier 10 isn't that important. Um, you know, stats-wise, it's the same. Uh, it, it actually is slightly better, and it is a higher tier than tier 9. But the troop types are the same. Infantry is also airships. Walker is also infantry, and, inf and airships is also walkers. But... The same thing happens at Tier 10, the same issue, uh, but th nothing really changes. The game really doesn't change. When you get Tier 9, the game changes. When you get Tier 10, not so much. When you get Tier 11, the game changes. Tier 11 hits harder, uh, Tier 11 changes, and now that now airships, instead of being walker subclass, they become infantry subclass, which kind of forces a lot of players to change their mains because another very interesting thing happens when you hit Tier 10 is you realize that the next thing you're going to be going for and going hard for is either Bridge 22 and Building 22s or Tier 11 or both. Uh, but when that happens, you have to go down one tech route. You do not go down two tech routes after Tier 10 because it's way too expensive. It's just too expensive to level up more than one until you get Mastery finished because Mastery is so good in Advanced Tier. So really, that's a lot of what we're going to be talking about today is this crucial decision. Do you continue going down your path? Or now that you've experienced Infantry, Walker, and Airships, and you know the current meta you're playing in, do you choose something you didn't expect to? Like me, for example. I went from Infantry to Walkers for a long time when because I was running Tier 11 Infantry and Full Metal, worked with, uh, Full Metal Walkers worked with Tier 11, uh, and now I'm back to Infantry. Um, so... That's kind of what we have to look at here, uh, is the realization that, yes, in peak contests, you can have a Rogers, a full metal, and an infantry main, because research doesn't matter, it's just gear and mostly gems, and gear's not that important, I and mean, it is, 30 gear versus 40 gear is big in a, in a huge battle, but for peak, it's fine. Um, but in this context, with the research only applying to normal PvP and galactic battle and server side stuff, and uh, the research applying just to the troops you own... Uh, you really can't have an infantry, an airship, and a walker. You can't. Not not realistically. So you have to kind of choose. Do you want a full metal and a Rogers? Do you want a full metal and a Gilly? Do you want a Gilly and a Vega? How do you want to play the game? Uh, and I think that's kind of what it comes down to. to. Choose a defensive comp or utility comp and then choose an offensive comp. There's no point in having a Gilly and a Vega, right? Because, yeah, if you go, if you go airships, and now we're getting into the complicated bits. If you go airships... Um, at tier 10, your Gilly will not be used, but your Vega would be. Vega could use the tier 10 airships, but they use a Walker subclass. At tier 11, the Maelstrom airships do work with infantry, so you could go Vega and Gilly, but they really do function as very similar commanders, so it doesn't kind of make sense to have two one-slot bust or offense comps. Uh, no, the better thing to do here would be go Rogers, right, for the tier 11 airships, and then gilly for the infantry one slot bus damage or just go vega rogers and don't even worry about the secondary class if you don't want to uh, but what you wouldn't do is go airships and then full metal or elf because they're not going to work with tier 11 so you need to start planning at tier 10 
what you want to do at tier 11. Now, if you don't plan on getting tier 11 for a year, take your time. Don't worry about it. But a lot of players get to tier 10 and they stop and they see that second fork and they go in the road and they go, oh, I got to really think about this. Do I research all three again? And then they start seeing how far it goes and they go, no, uh oh, I got to choose one. That's right. You got to choose one. Unless you're a big baller and want to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars unlocking multiple tech routes, you choose just one. So let's dig into Magnum PI's account. He's an 86 million power arc and he is equally split he was telling me at 100k vega 170k full metal and is it gilly 140k gilly ouch that's 400,000 leadership separated over three commanders i am not a big fan you guys have seen my rock video i like one big commander to hit people hard to one slot bust hard and to get points on bigger opponents than me uh but magnum pi has been kind of playing the field he likes fighting in battles he said this is a really good setup for him in peak and i know it is he does well in peak contest city like got ranked 300 400 last week or last month um and that's because he has such a balanced lineup you know it's really hard to get through a vega a gilly and a full metal i mean if that vega was a rogers oh my god what a lineup uh, but he's got a hundred thousand plus right uh, but he's getting to that point where he's got to consolidate now rock and nekajiro we can ignore that the rest of these commanders i don't expect them to have any serious leadership now they're just going to be absorbed in the next cycle cool cerberus uh anything special about this not nah, just normal lineup okay so what do we do if you're magnum pi what do you do i mean we've done a lot of pimp my arc i don't need to go into the gear too much i've gone over the gear uh in other videos and the commander card breakdowns so it's it's really the, the decision he wanted me to make for him i said man this really isn't the decision i like to make for people you kind of have to decide what does your guild need what do you go against the most in capitals do you pvp at all uh, you know, what is going to work to your strength and make you enjoy the game the most? That's why I played Bullet for so long. I was able to score big on players that I wanted to pick fights with big players and I wanted to score on them without risking anything. Bullet was the perfect play for me. Uh, but that has changed. So I don't know where people are at in their game sense. And it feels like to me, Magnum PI probably doesn't want to stay walkers i'm pretty sure he's kind of got a like a, a soft spot in his heart for offensive one slot bust comps so he has to kind of make the decision does he want to go gilly or nekajiro or vega and uh, that's really his decision to make the tier 12 is something to consider later on but getting to tier 11 is very hard if you're just at tier 10 getting to tier 11 is very hard so tier 10 is is your next stop and you can't really go airships uh at tier 10 and have infantry so if he wants to go vega and he goes airships he pretty much is going to dump gilly right for at least a while and then main full metal for for um what is it peak contest uh but if he goes infantry he can play vega with huge damage from infantry that works great with breakdown gemini right and his infantry would work with airships airship comms of course uh, but also gilly gilly or neko if he wants to go down that route so infantry is great at that point the problem is is with infantry at tier 10, uh, once you go tier 11, you face what I faced, and that is that your airship comms no longer work. And uh, Vega's a great commander to walk away from him for tier 11, from that period of tier 11 to tier 12. Could be a year before you get to tier 12. Uh, it's hard to do. So in your case, I would say because you're a big peak contest player on a low spending account, you want to keep full metal in the loop, but it is time to dump Gilly or Vega. Now, if you really like the idea of one slot busting, maybe stick with tier 11 infantry um, just because you can still rock Vega. And yes, you won't be able to use that tier 11 infantry with your full metal on server side battles, which kind of sucks. But realistically, I don't think people do a lot of big PvP combat with full metal on their own server. I mean, I didn't when I had them. I thought I would end up doing a lot more, and I didn't. Um, the smartest thing to do would go tier, uh, go go for tier ten airships, and then rock Vega and full metal all the way through. Right. Once you get to tier eleven, uh, then you have to say, okay, well, now I have a tier eleven airship that works with airships and infantry, which is kind of the same build. Uh, do I stay with that for a while and absorb my Vega into my Gilly, keep using those tier eleven airships, and then buff a Rogers? Uh, it's kind of a tough play. I don't know, man. It's one of those things where I wish I was more concise about it, but it does force you to go down to two commanders, and the commanders change from tier 10 to tier 11. So uh, I don't want to keep harping on that. I think people realize the the, perplex the perplexity of that, and uh, the top eight commanders in the game right now really do afford you a lot of options to go with. 
So let's jump to server 1015. That's currently where we're at. Let's take a look here. I was talking to Magnum PI about this. I said, you know, one of the things about 1015 is I get a lot of viewers from 1015. It's such a popular server. And I think part of the reason is it's like a really young server. It's an active server. It's not an old beard server where there's like five tier 12 players. There has been no capital battles for six months. The guilds all know the alliances and no one breaks them anymore. Anyone who did quit or got zeroed a long time ago. Some servers don't have action for days, weeks, months. It's just a dead zone. Or they're all alliance out and no one can hit each, hit each other. But on 1015, I mean, they've only got two guys, three guys with tier 12. The Captain Harlock leading the server with 221 million power. I mean, not a lot of people over 100 million here, guys. It's a very small server, and there's a lot of players that are really active that are joining the server and just causing trouble. ROC, MFY, Ace, and there's one more guild that's up to no good here. They might have... Yeah, they might have moved. Uh, I don't know who LMA is, but um, I don't know. It's a great server, and I, I was telling Paul or Magnum PI that it was. It's just a lot of fun to be on a server where there's a lot of action, a lot of young players, a lot of growth. Because uh, it's nothing worse than playing a game that you want to log into and get into fights all the time, but your server is just dead. So enjoy the server you're on, and if you don't like it, you know, grab some honor tokens and server migrate. You're not you're not guaranteed or married to any server. If you're not having enough fun, switch it up. All right, three more things. I want to say thanks to all the meme engineers that participate Friday in Meme Review. That's like the funnest thing we do on this channel. Uh, it just produces a bunch of great content and interaction and art. And just it's a it's a great way to interact with your community without uh, really getting toxic or dramatic about anything. It's just a fun way to, to produce new content and share it with the rest of the community. So thanks for being a huge part of that, Magnum. Uh, let's do your shout outs. We got Crouton Bomb who is also a big meme engineer and a community member, uh, who started off rough, not the greatest meme engineer at first, but over time has become, well, let's just say the student has become the teacher. So congratulations, Crouton Bomb, on winning meme review. Uh, and then also Nick1990. Nick1990 used to be a member of the, one of the bosses of ROC, and uh, he left to join the Super Guild. But uh, Magnum PI said, Nick, don't sweat it. Keep grinding, man. It's been amazing to watch you grow. Uh, and better luck next season. He knows how important it was for you to make it to the final, and me as well, but we didn't make it, but better luck next season. And the last thing. I don't want to make it seem like I spent a lot of time muddling with people's heads, trying to confuse them more about what to do with Tier 10 and Tier 11. The fact of the matter is, is there are just many factors to consider. And one of them is time. Should you rush build Bridge 22 and buildings of Bridge 22 and, and the buildings? Or uh, do you want to rush the tier and advance research? Because you're talking thousands of dollars in crystals. And what it really kind of looks like is once you choose, let's say, walkers, you know for sure your tier 11 commander is going to be a walker commander. It has to be. Because your main commander, if, if you go down walker now, if it's full metal, then by the time you have a walker infantry subclass, infantry is your second commander. By the time you get to tier 11, your walker now becomes airships. The planes walker is uh, walker airship. So you're going to lose your old secondary commander, but you are going to keep your main commander. So what it really comes down to is who do you want your main to be if you go down the airship route? If you go down the airship route, it looks like it's going to be Vega, probably not Rogers, right? So your backup comm is going to be full metal for a while, and then you're going to switch back to infantry, maybe. Not a lot of infantry commanders can give you the, the, the defense or utility that airship and walker give you with full metal and rogers and elf. Infantry just doesn't really do it that well right now. Uh, if you go down the infantry route, it's great. You can have your ghillie for huge one-slot bus or vega for huge one-slot bus. But know that when you get your tier 11 uh, infantry, your eye of greed, you no longer get to use your airship. So your vegas are going to turn into full metals for a while. Uh, so... It's really up to you, man. I, th I think, honestly, you would probably enjoy going infantry the most. Uh, just because once you hit tier 11, having a viable full metal for a few months or a year is, is kind of fun. Having a huge infantry or uh, commander. So switching your Vega back to a ghillie and then having full metal as a backup. I know, I know, I know. It's, I'm muddling it up again. I'm muddling it up. I'm muddling it up. But whatever you choose in tier 10 is going to be your main at tier 11. Or probably your main. You can mix it up, but probably. Good God, look at this man's armies. He has a ton of troops. All right, let's take him out for a test drive. We know Teletran. Uh-oh, this is going to be a tough fight for us. He's like almost twice our power. Here we go. Elf, Chief Medusa, all walkers, all walkers. Uh-oh. 
Uh, yeah, we're in trouble, big time. Two tier advantage, but we are a full medal against an elf. We might do okay here, but it's gonna be tough. Oh, that curse is gonna. She's gonna start healing. This curse is gonna be bad. I don't know. She might kill us. Yeah, she got us pretty good there. Ouch. All right, Vega, crush through. Go, oh, Jim and I break down. We might get through here. Okay, we're gonna get through here. Oh, okay. Well, we're still gonna get through. Um. I still don't know if we're going to win. That back row is serious, and Elf is no fun to get in a toe-to-toe -to -toe fight with. I still think we lose this. Yeah, we lost that. Uh-oh. God, we can't even get by our Elf. Maybe this Gilly could. Give me a, give me a good Gemini. Come on. Oh, it's Virgo. Okay, so actually, yeah, there it is. That's it. We're going to win. We're going to get through there. All right, we're going to make it to the Chief, boys. We're going to make it to the Chief. Tier, tier 9 Infantry versus Tier 10 Walkers. We're slightly bigger, but oh, God, we got one shot. We're in trouble, boys. The Virgo slows the damage, and we made it through. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Okay, just don't get awakening. Don't get awakening. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Don't crit. Oh, God. Oh, God. Yes! <laughs> my hands got cut off. <laughs> All right, we're going to lose this, but still, we did well, guys. We did good. We did good. Whew, what an emotional roller coaster. Dragon Lords on 1059. I I got your request for the shout out, but I'm I'm getting kicked out of the account, so I wasn't able to film it right. But I saw it. I saw it. 